the time of war that we are living in a time of war. The frequency, ferocity, and brutality of street violence, domestic violence, and most importantly, police violence increases. Do you know that the fastest growing segment of the U.S. prison population, the largest prison population in the world, per capita or otherwise, the largest prison population in the world, the fastest growing segment is women? Yes. Do you know that we know it's genocide when they come for the women and the children? Now, I never thought of myself. <laughs> Shit didn't make no sense to me in school. And then I went to war and fought a bunch of poets. And then young people living hip-hop lives found ways to give expression to their experiences and the conditions of their lives creating culture. Let me say that one more time because I think it's real important. That young people living hip-hop lives found ways to give expression to their experiences and the conditions of their lives creating culture. And I felt something. And then the poets among them came to it. And they called it spoken word and slam. And I began to understand Five in the morning, 18 and 19 year olds running formation, calling kings, learning to become. I want to be an airborne ranger, living on blood and guts and danger. Every day, all day, airborne ranger. C-130 going down the strip, airborne daddy going to take a trip. When we get up oh so high, we going to jump right in the sky. Are you ready? He was a nine or ten year old boy that fooled on the side of the road like hundreds of others. I was riding shocked in the truck. How was the one with the gun? The driver crushed his skull with a can of sea rash. I was cruising at 1,500 feet, keep my mind and body clear and cool, a hellbound fool, mindful, if you will, that chopper landed for fuel. Five men got on. Three groups, two Americans, two groups tied up right. And when we got up oh so high, two groups don't talk. And they threw one of them to stop. Splattered by rotor driven paddy water, we put him on the chopper. Eyes wide with wonder, he beheld his whore and his blessing. And as he laughed and cried, I watched his whore turn to eternity's gaze. Walking in the days, those in the haze see only a phase. Y'all hear the tale of my days? I ain't no days. I live through my haze. And they think this only a phase. Two years by, I don't forget that boot couldn't fly. And when I rose with my voice and my body to oppose that war and to struggle against white supremacy, I found myself sitting in a chair, hands cuffed behind, being interrogated by six of Chicago's finest. Snatching that chair, flying through air, cop on each arm, open window in sky, back in that chair. Heart pounding, real hard. Now back in the Nam, we had us a joke we told. It goes kind of like this. Now I know how to solve this situation we got us here in the Nam. Is that right? Go ahead, man. Tell me, you know, I'm a lover, I'm not a fighter. So, yeah, man, someone mess around my back door. You know I gotta go. Yeah, man, we gotta get out. Tell us how we get out of Well, first. First, you take all the friendly Vietnamese and you put them on Liberty ships in the Bay of Saigon. Then you kill everything else. And then you sink the ships. We did tell that joke. And we did laugh. That's genocide, y'all. <clears throat> That's genocide. They said they found her in a hole in the ground. Hair in the back of my next to her. We didn't talk about these things. Why were they? They said they found her in a hole in the ground and they pulled her out. Hair all over my body began to deal. We didn't talk about these things. Why were they? They said they found her in a hole in the ground and they pulled her out and they stripped her clothes off. I felt my skin move. 
We didn't talk about these things. Why was that? Why did I have to hear this story? They said they found her in the hole in the ground and they pulled her out and they stripped her clothes off and they tied a spread eagle upside down on the front of the armored personnel carrier. And I felt my skin crawl. We didn't talk about these things. Why were they? Why did I have to hear this story? And they said they found her in a hole in the ground, and they pulled her out, and they stripped her clothes off, and they tied a spread eagle upside down on the front of the armored personnel carrier, and they cut a sapling, and they shoved it in her cunt, and they loaded it up, and they had it up. What terror. What terror, I say, that they experienced that drove them to tell of their deeds. Has she somehow taken their souls? No. No, no, no. No, their souls were gone long before they found her in that hole in the ground. My soul split when that little boy got his soul crushed. I reflected on this some of the years since. I don't think she screamed. When they pierced her body and split her open, I don't think she screamed. Her silence, too much to be endured. They went mad. Y'all find this shit hard to believe? I think all the women get the shit beat out of them every day and never say a word. More on Super Bowl Sunday than any other day of the year. I think of all the women who get the shit beat out of them every day and never say a word. Y'all don't know any? Turn. Ask the woman next to you. She does. I spent two days in Vietnam last June at any high school in USA, right here in Oakland, California. Landmines of, of the heart all day today. Outside the door after class, a young man tells me his uncle, the uncle he never knew, his mother's brother, was killed in Vietnam. The look in his eyes says, please, please tell me about my uncle. I give him my sorrow and my best for his mother. He pulls him into his eyes and moves on down the hall. Turning, a young man thrusts his hand to me. Firm, steady grip holds my hand. With quivering voice, through trembling lips, he thanks me for coming to class. It helps him understand what his father goes through, he says. Tears fill my eyes as they fall down his cheeks. We hug, and he moves on down the hall. Vietnamese young man lingers, shaking my hand, wanting to know the history, his history, that has shaped his family and that they do not speak of. And he's out the door, moves on down the hall. Rainbow young women shake my hand, looking into my eyes, whisper thank you. And they go out the door, move on down the hall. And they ask me if I kill him. And they ask me how it feels. And they ask me if a close friend was killed. And they ask me how it feels. At least half. I tell y'all, at least half. These 14, 15, 16 year olds know someone killed in Oakland streets. I know this because I asked them. I ask them how it feels. We all better. We talk so. I come from people whose people have different gods. Half from the people that Jesus came from. Half from the people who follow Jesus. I come from people whose people have different gods. Now, I'm not a religious man, that's right. Don't practice no religion. But I know when I've been touched by the Spirit. And I've been touched by the Spirit more than twice. That's right. And while I'm not a religious man, I know I have Jesus. That's right, I know. Now you might ask, Mark, how is it you know you have Jesus in you? And I'd be glad you asked. Because to answer your question, I have to tell you all about Miss Hussey. And I surely, surely, surely want to tell all you all about Miss Hussey. Now Miss Hussey was the matriarch of a large extended family. 
was her great grandchildren, we hung her She was ageless, or so it seemed to the 11 year old boy in the story. Now, the man that boy grew into figures best he can. Miss Hustle was 75 to 80 years old. 1957, the story makes Miss Hudson the granddaughter or daughter of a slave. Her mother a young girl, but a slave in time. Was she the first woman with this blood to see her family grow, to teach her family, to keep her daughter, Miss Hudson, to keep the faith and the flow? Now, Miss Hudson loved Jesus. Oh, that's right. She loved Jesus with a passion and an activism. A social activism she used to sweep us children up off the streets with and let us in her kitchen, sitting around the table reading the Bible, that's right, the Bible. Twelve to fourteen of us around that table. Girls, boys, ages four to fourteen, most of us eleven and twelve. When Miss Hudson was our age, when black people were killed for learning to read. That's right. And now Miss Hudson teaching us reading and loving. Now she couldn't walk without no cane. So she moved around that kitchen, holding onto the counters, backs of our chairs and the table. Pots bubbling, pans sizzling on the stove. She praise one child, tell another pay attention, give another a hug. Stirring pots and working pans. She'd help us with a word we couldn't pronounce or add a word we left out. Stopping now and then to recite from memory the passage we had just read, dramatizing and giving life to the Bible story, expressing the love in her heart for us. Now y'all remember Miss Hudson loved Jesus. Oh, that's right. She loved Jesus with a passion and an activism. And she loved us like that too. And she took that passion and activism and turned them into fried chicken box dinners. Now that's magic, ain't it? You know that's right. Cook all day, Saturday, Sunday, frying chicken, making salad, baking cornbread, and you know there was some pot. And we children ran all over the day. That's why we ran. We ran from house to house getting orders, running orders back to that kitchen, running box dinners back to that house, running money back to Miss Hudson's kitchen, running door to door, telling everyone Miss Hudson was taking us to the amusement park. That's right, Euclid Beach Park. And that's just what happened. Was the box dinner money house she took us. And everyone got dinners that week. I mean, people found money they didn't have to buy them dinners, because they were celebration dinners. And everyone needed to be part of the effort and the celebration, because everyone knew and understood about Euclid Beach Music Walk. And now, a white supremacist place whose time had come, dared to struggle, dared to win. Join with me, the Prisoners of Conscience Committee, all of us and none, umbrella grouping, Formerly incarcerated people, and we say, we say, what's the call? Free them all! This is the call and response, y'all. That's the call, and now you know the response. Let's engage it. We've got to use our voices in this struggle. We say, we say, what's the call? Free them all! Dead y'all warm with a young man's heart. Shit. We <laughs> say, what's the call? Free them all! Dead the struggle. Dead the win. All power to the people. Fist up! Fight back! Fist up! Fight back!